One of these three men receives hundreds of letters each week addressed to Dear Bessie. What is your name, please? My name is Kurt Lassen. My name is Kurt Lassen. My name is Kurt Lassen. Only one of these men is the real Kurt Lassen. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Robert Q. Lewis, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Tell the Brought to you this week by new Easy-On Spray Starch, the new push-button starch. Spray it, iron instantly. New Easy-On Spray Starch. Good evening, panel. Good, Good evening, evening Bob. Bob. My golly, this is one of the greatest opening guns we've had in a long time. Well, we're all set with something interesting for you. Would you kindly uh, open that envelope, the first one, and take out your affidavit card for the first time. Follow along as I read. I, Kurt Lassen, write a syndicated column which appears in over 150 newspapers. In the column, I answer questions sent to me by teenagers all over the country. The most frequent writers are girls, and the questions they ask most often are, how can I get a certain boy to ask me out, and do you approve of going steady? To the hundreds of young people who write me every week, I am better known as Dear Bessie. Sign, Kurt Lassen. So, panel, we bring you three gentlemen, all claiming to be Kurt Lassen, who writes a column under the name of Bessie Little. And we'll start this questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, Bud. Um, how did you happen to get the name number two of Dear Bessie? My daughter's name is Bessie. And you chose that? Yes, I did. Number three, what is the syndicate you work for? Columbia Features. Number one, does your, does your column appear in a New York paper? No. Uh, number two, who's the uh, publisher of the New York Times? I'm sorry, I don't know. Uh, number three, do, I, I, I have a, a teenage daughter. Um, do you approve of going steady? Uh, under some conditions, yes. Oh, that's an iffy answer. <laughs> uh, how can you get a boy to ask you out, number one? I'm asking this question for myself. <laughs> I only deal with teenagers. Watch it there, you boy. Mean, Watch it. <laughs> you mean I'm off in the sea without a paddle? I think you're at least 20. <laughs> That's a good recovery. Tom. I thought he was going to deal her a teenager <laughs> for the evening. Uh, number one, you did say your last name. It sort of sounded like Bessie when you said it. Uh, uh, pronounce it for us again, would you? Lesson. It, you, it is sort of like Bessie. Uh, 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 number two, Shirley MacLaine uh, uh, has recently had something to do with a, a syndicated columnist. What do you suppose you would do if she came into your office to ask you a little advice? I'd try my best to give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, where did, you, where did you get the name Bessie, may I ask? Uh, from a girl who was working for me. Oh. oh. Peggy. Well, Bessie number one. Uh, recently, somebody, uh, a clergyman, came very strongly against going steady. Do you know where that clergyman, uh, what state that clergyman was from? No. No. Uh, number two, who's dear Abby? That's Abigail Van Buren. Thank you. And uh, number three, Who's Dear Abby's sister? Um, I can't remember. Number one, do you know Dear Abby's sister? Ann Landers. Thank you. Um, now, uh, number two, do you approve of going steady? Yes, I do. You got somebody there. Oh, you do approve of going steady. Uh, number one, do you approve of going steady? Under certain circumstances. What circumstances? Robert Q. Lewis. <laughs> Uh, Bessie number one, would you care to answer that question? <laughs> if the child is old enough, if they are both old enough. All right, number two, Bessie number two, uh, what syndicate do you work for? Columbia Features. Columbia Features, number one, uh, Columbia Features, uh, what is their main outlet in what city? 
Well, they have no main outlet. They cover the entire country. Are they in Chicago, number one? Yes. Uh, number two, are you in Shreveport, Louisiana? Yes, sir. What paper in Shreveport? Times Picayune. Times Picayune in Shreveport. Number three, very seriously, uh, you have quite a job to do because there's so much bad said about teenagers. Uh, is it your opinion that teenagers today are, are not as bad as they are pictured? Uh, I think we accentuate the negative too much on teenagers. Number one, what... That's all the time we have. That's a good note to leave on. And uh, let's get to the business of marking our ballot, shall we? Mark them at once. Without change, and of course, no consultation permitted as you vote for number one, number two, or number three. Team of challenges will receive the customary $250 for each and every incorrect vote. Are all ballots marked, panel? Mm, difficult. Very yeah. well. Tom, for whom did you vote? I thought it was very difficult. <clears throat> I voted for number two. He, he seemed to be... Uh, uh, used to giving answers, and I figured that Bessie would have a uh, lot to answer for. Uh, I mean, you know. <laughs> and Peggy, what is your choice? Well, I didn't vote for number two because I thought the Times Picayune was in New Orleans. That's right. And so I voted for number three because you know something? He doesn't look a bit like advice to the lovelorn, and therefore he probably is. Robert Q. Well, I voted, uh, I voted Bud for number one. The uh, Times Picayune, to my best knowledge, is not a Shreveport paper. And if I had a teenage son or daughter, I'd like to trust him or her to number one, I think. All right. Now you've got your choices. Which one of your compatriots you will side with, Kitty? One, two, or three? I voted for number one. Um, I, I honestly think that, uh, coming from New Orleans at the Times Picayune, it may be in Shreveport by now, but it wasn't there when I was there. And uh, number one said Ann Landers was... Um, and I think maybe that's true. Is it true? Yeah, they're sisters. They are sisters. Oh, you didn't know that three. <laughs> he couldn't remember. <laughs> oh, right. and, and so I voted for number one. All right, there we have it with the votes all in, justly uh -huh. judged, and of course, uh, with good sound reasoning going behind each vote. So let's learn now which one of these gentlemen actually is the gentleman who runs the column of advice to the uh, teenager under the name of Dear Bessie. Will the real Kurt Lassen, please stand up. Holy oh, boy. <laughs> now, just to set the record straight, Kurt Lassen writes his Dear Bessie column for Columbia Features. Everyone else was asked what syndicate, but not he. I thought we would have get him where he belonged. Number one, what is your real name, sir, and what do you really do? My name is Tyler Barto, and I'm a lawyer. <laughs> Here in New York, New York City. And number two, what is your name, sir, and what do you do? My name is Granville Hinton. I'm mayor of Savannah, Tennessee. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, we check the score, we find that there were one, two, three incorrect votes, and that's not too bad. Adding three times two, $250 is easy and comes out with a nice round figure of $750, gentlemen. And that comes to you, of course, from Easy On Spray Starch, as well as a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Easy On. And our sincere thanks to you. We hope you had as good a time as you gave to us. Thank you for that. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> Let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Ivor Noel Hume. My name is Ivor Noel Hume. My name is Ivor Noel Hume. Would you kindly open up that next affidavit and take it out and follow along with me, panel? I, Ivor Noel Hume, am chief archaeologist for Colonial Williamsburg in Virginia. My excavations have brought to light such diverse articles as candlesticks, wine bottles, and a corset. My archaeological detective work has its ups and downs. Up hundreds of feet in an airplane to take aerial photographs and down 40 feet into an unused well shaft sifting through the debris. However, the end product is always the same. The addition of another piece to the jigsaw puzzle of America's past. Signed, Ivor Noel Hume. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Ivor Noel Hume, Williamsburg archaeologist. And we'll start this cross-examination with the good host of Player Hunch, Robert Q. Lewis. Thank you, bud. Uh, Mr. Hume, number one, are your ex excavations uh, restricted to the area around Virginia in which you work? Yes, they are. And number two, uh, what is the museum in New York in which we might find artifacts similar to those you uh, have found? Uh, the Metropolitan has some. Are there any others, to your best knowledge, number two? Um, not that I know. Not excavated material, no. Number three, what is the age of the oldest artifact you have found? Well, the oldest ones, of course, are Indian relics. Uh, could you describe Arrow one heads. such old relic? Arrowheads. Mm -hmm. Number one, uh, uh, what was the corset that you fellows came upon? Was it of recent vintage, if that is the word <laughs> for a corset? Uh, it was dated about... 1625. Oh, really? Where is that on exhibit? In the, in the museum at, at the town. <laughs> I'd like to see that. Two, was it in good condition? Uh, it was half a course and it wasn't in very good condition. Moldy? Uh, not exactly. No. Number, <laughs> number three, where did you find it? Oh, uh, this was found in a house. Ah, number one, do you happen to know who Henry Carter is? Archaeologist? Uh, I don't know him personally, but he was very famous for his works in, um, in Egypt. Uh, number two, you are British. Yes, I am. Well, how come you're interested in American excavations? Well, because they're largely British excavations, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> number three. I'm sorry, there goes the bell on that one, Kitty. Tom. We can't have anything of our own. <laughs> Uh, I'm number two. I'm very interested in the. Uh, do you suppose there's any connection between the candlesticks, the wine bottles, and the corset? <laughs> <laughs> number two. Uh, number three said that uh, they were. It was found. Does that mean number two that you didn't find these uh, items? No, I found them all. Number three. What did you mean by saying they were found in a house? Well, you asked me where they were found, and they were found in one of those particular houses. Oh, I, I, you changed the, the, event, so yeah, the question changed was, the where did you find them? And you said they were found in a house. I thought maybe you, you meant you didn't find them. Uh, number, number three, what does archaeology mean, the actual word itself? Well, archaeology is uh, best described as the science of uh, digging up artifacts which are related to history. If you can relate history to it. Thank you. Kitty, I'm rather Peggy. I beg your uh, pardon. Thank you. And uh, number you. one... What's a bundling board? Um, it's, it was normally used to segregate the sexes. Thank you. <laughs> Number three, what is syllabub? Syllabub? Yes. Well, that sounds like an American phrase we don't use in Britain. Thank you. Number two, who paid for the Williamsburg restoration? Uh, it was paid for initially by John D. Rockefeller, Jr. Thank you. Um, number one, what is the first settlement in Virginia? First settlement was Jamestown. Jamestown, thank you. Uh, and that's all the time we have. I have so much we'd like to ask about, I know. But after the show, you can talk to these gentlemen and find out all you wish. In the meantime, please mark your ballots at once, without change, and without consultation, which you know is not permitted as you vote for number one, number two, or number three. Are all ballots marked? All right, well, Tom, starting with you as usual, what, for whom did you vote? Well, I didn't really ask number one any questions, and I must say they were all uh, very good, but I voted for number two. I liked the, the straightforward way he answered the questions. I think it was number two. Peggy. Well, I think they're all down there digging. That's what I think. <laughs> I cast my vote for number one because, well, he, see, he just seemed to really know it. all the answers, all the questions I asked him. He knew more than I did. Robert Q. To be perfectly honest with you, Bud, I know this show, and I picked <clears throat> the gentleman I thought was least obvious, <laughs> truly. I, I voted for number two. I, I'm sure it's number one, though. And Kitty, where does your vote fit? I voted for number one because I think a syllabub is a drink, isn't yes, it? Yes. A drink, and he should, I think, number three, he should have known that. Um, Maybe he I voted, drink. It's a southern drink. Yeah, I voted for number one because he took it all very seriously. He wasn't laughing a bit about digging up corsets and things like that. <laughs> and I think that's the way it should be. Oh, I'm going to dig up a corset. <laughs> so the votes are in, and again, we've come to that point of staring at the truth and seeing whether it stares back at us or over our shoulder. We've got a two and two split vote here, so let's find out now which of these gentlemen actually is the archaeologist who has done considerable digging down and around Williamsburg, Virginia. So will the real Ivor Noel Hume 
please stand up. Thank you very much. I would like to tell you that Ivor Noel Hume is the author of a book on colonial archaeology, which should be fascinating. It was just published today, I believe. Is that right? That's right. And it's entitled, Here Lies Virginia. It doesn't, Not say, a whether, title, I think. It doesn't say whether she lies here with or without corset. It just says, Here Lies Virginia. Our best wishes to you, sir, for Thank a great you. success. Must be a fascinating thing. It's a fascinating town to visit. The restoration is beautiful. Uh, number one, what is your real name? You split the votes here, and what do you really do? Uh, my name is Bromfield Jones, and I'm a captain in the Merchant Marine. <laughs> and number three, what is your real name, sir, and what do you do? My name is Robert Brignall, and I'm a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, checking the score, we find that there were exactly two incorrect votes this round. And at $250 each, that adds up to a total and a distinguished one of $500. And that's a good victory over this panel because they're a keen lot, believe me. That comes to you from Easy On Spray Starch, as does a gift package from the makers of all of the products that uh, Easy On Company make. And we thank you very much for being with us. Good night, gentlemen, and God bless you. <laughs> Let's meet our third team of challengers. <laughs> What is your name, please? My name is Diane Barton. My name is Diane Barton. My name is Diane Barton. Now will you listen and follow along, if you wish, with your copies of this affidavit. I, Diane Barton, have been playing bridge since I was eight years old. Bridge experts are rated by a system of master points. These can be won only in tournament play. Many good players accumulate only 100 such points in a whole lifetime. I now have over 450 master points. I am the youngest player in history ever to become a life master. The highest bridge rating obtainable. Signed, Diane Barton. <laughs> And so, panel, we bring you three young ladies, each one claiming to be Diane Barton, a life master in the game of bridge. And we start with Peggy Katz. Peggy? Thank you. Uh, Miss Barton, number two, is two spades a demand bid? Sometimes. Thank you. Miss uh, Barton, number three, is three no trump a game or not? Three no trump? Uh-huh. Yes. Thank you. Number one, how many games do you have to win to win a rubber? How many points to win a rubber? 200. Thank you. Uh, number two, what's auction bridge? Auction bridge is the type that was played a long time ago. We're back in the 40s. Now we play contract bridge. <laughs> 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 number three. Aren't you glad? Uh, Aren't my feelings you are asked? way back in the 40s indeed. <laughs> number three, what's to finesse? <laughs> finesse is try to, um, on your opponent, being you are the declare to try to finesse a particular card. Thank you. Robert Q. Well, but all I can say is... Well, they, they're playing whist in the 30s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but an evening, an evening with any one of these three beautiful creatures spent in playing bridge is a complete waste. <laughs> However, uh, number one, uh, you say you've only been pl you've been playing since you were eight years old. Must be about ten now. It's terribly attractive. Do, uh, can you tell me, please, how many members there are of the uh, Life Masters group? In the Life Masters? Yes, approximately. I don't know. You have no idea. Number two, have you any idea? I think there are um, about three hundred. About Kitty. Th number oh. three, what is Tawi? I have no idea. Uh, number two, do you know the name of the Regency Club in New York? The Regency Club? Yes. You mean the American Contract Bridge League? No. Um, well, number one, what is Blackwood? It's a slam convention. Uh, number two, what is Culbertson? Culbertson, he well, was with the uh, point count system. 
Uh, number two, in the point count system of Gorin, what is the least amount of points you have to open the bid? Well, he says 13. I've opened with 11. You have? Yes. Tom. They're really too smart for words. <laughs> mm. uh, I will ask number three, who gives these points? Who is in authority to give these masters points and so forth? The ACBL. What does that mean, number two? The, the American Contract Bridge League. Thank you. Uh, uh, number one, uh, can bridge be a gambling game? Uh, the league doesn't permit it. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that they have somebody in every little uh, private place there where they might be gambling and they say, aha, caught you. You missed the dick. Well, that's all the time we have, so aha, caught you. It's time for you to mark your ballots, if you will, please, at once, without change, and no consultation as you mark now for number one, number two, or number three. All votes in? There goes Tom's. I guess everybody else has. Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number one. I thought they were all very smart. I didn't know any questions asking me. Peggy Cass, what about your selection? Well, I voted for number two because I thought she really did know the most about bridge. I think it takes more than 200 points to win a game. And Robert... where we play. <laughs> Robert Q. Lewis. Boy, I, uh, I go along with Tom. I voted for number one. I, I just seem to think she was the gal. Well, we're approaching unanimity here now. Kitty, are you going to make it unanimous? I voted for number two. There, breaks the ice. Um, I think anyone who plays bridge should know what Towie is. And number two was adventuresome enough to say that she disregards Goran and opens with 11, uh, 12 instead of 13. And I think that shows she's a good bridge player. She's a creative bridge player. A losing right. <laughs> We've come to that moment now when we go digging away at the uh, truth and where it lies to find out who's right and who's wrong among our whist experts of the 30s over here. <laughs> but the votes are all cast and clearly marked in front of them. They're represented by them. They've given their reasons for them. Three for number one and one for number two. Let's go at it now and find out who has the winning hand here as we find out which of these three young ladies actually is the youngest real live bridge life master in history. So will the real Diane Barton please stand up. <laughs> well, I guess they were, I guess they, they played something similar to contract bridge back there, way back in the 40s, because they, they caught you. They knew. At least two of them knew who the real one was. What have we got here now? We've got a vote of uh, two for one and two for two. Breaking up here, I broke it up wrong when I repeated it. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Linda Freed. I work for Allied Purchasing Office as assistant buyer in children's wear. <laughs> and number three, uh, what is your real name and what is your bridge background? <laughs> I won't answer the last half. <laughs> but my name is Ginger Gibson, and I'm a bunny at the New York Playboy Club. <laughs> Where they, they play bridge in between Easter's up there. <laughs> well, it was fun. And checking the score, we find you ladies have uh, cudgeled up a little bit here that says two incorrect votes, and at $250 each, that's $500. You'll find a way to use that, I'm sure, and take with it our warm thanks. And, of course, it comes your way by way of Easy On as well as a gift package of all of the fine products from the makers of Easy On. Thanks again, ladies, for being with us. Good night, and God bless you. That's all the time we have for tonight, panel. You were wonderful, except I do want to tell all of you to stay tuned, for I've got a secret where Peggy Cass will appear with Gary Moore in their version of To Tell the Truth. Oh, yeah? On behalf of all of us here on To Tell the Truth, we'd like to extend our congratulations to our good friend and colleague, whom you've grown to know and love over the years as much as we have, uh, Ed Sullivan, is celebrating the 15th anniversary on the air. Congratulations, Ed. <laughs> now, good night to you, panel. Uh, don't forget, all of you, to be with us the same time next week. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on our first year's anniversary on the daytime show of To Tell the Truth. Tell them this is Bud Collier saying good night for easy off and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Hoffman production. <laughs> Thank you.
to tell the truth has been brought to you by Anison, to relieve headache, pain, fight depression, and calm jittery nerves. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.